everyone, it's Emily here with my April wrap up. So I read a total of 11 books this month. That's crazy. I read 11 books. That's that's a lot of books. So, so let's talk about what I read. I'm going to get right into it. The first book I read was I wrapped up my Lord of the Rings read. So I read The Return of the King at the beginning of the month. And I just, I love this book so much. I love it. Um, this is a really great end to the series. I, I think sometimes end, the final book in a trilogy is a little bit like the weak link because they have too much to wrap up. And I've read some final books that were not the greatest, but this is just such a solid end to the series. It's great. It's perfect. So, yeah. Loved it. Five stars. I mean, of course, five stars. I also read The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubacker Bradley, and I did a full review that I will link if you want to see that. Um, this book is just so good. It was... It's a middle grade historical fiction that takes place during World War II. So right there, you had me. It's I was going to read that. But it's just such a awesome story about a coming it's a coming of age, but it's about a girl overcoming the worst kind of odds <laughs> to find out that she's a strong person and uh, it's just it's so good. The relationship between Ada and Susan is amazing. I love if there's horses in it, it's just, it's a great story all the way around. I highly recommend it. Four and a half stars. This was a book I read for grade nine, but it will not be in grade nine. And that is Breathe by Sarah Crossan. This is dystopian. I really, I wanted a book because there's a, a, there's a chapter in one of the history geology books that talks about um, what will happen with the earth later on. And like, if we keep Re at treating the planet the way we're treating it with climate change and whatnot, eventually we will run into uh, some serious problems for our species. And um, so I wanted a book that addressed that. And so I found Breathe. I got it. I read it. Eh. It's okay. It's an okay read. It's about what happens in the future. We, we take down too many trees, basically. We, we cut down all the trees to suit our our materialistic needs and then we end up with an earth with no oxygen which is pretty dire and people live in this like bubbly type structure that they, they manufacture air they don't have plants and obviously this is a dystopia so there's a big scary government doing big evil things and they're they're basically making the people believe that plants are no longer possible. You can't grow plants. You have to live in our structure and pay for your air. And people live in the, the hierarchy. It's, it's pretty much straight up, like, factory-made dystopian lit. It's, it's, it's very manufactured, in my opinion. It just, it, it, like, ticks off all those things. We need the evil government. We need a girl and a boy who can take out the evil government. We need, it, it, it ugh. And so I just, it's okay. It's not a bad book necessarily, but it's not a good one either. I gave it three stars because it did keep me reading, but I was just like, meh. I picked up Memory of Water by Emmy Itarana. Itarana, I don't know how you say her name, but um, this is so good. This book was so much better. This is just the most, one of the most beautiful dystopian books I think I've ever read. And um, this one is about a same idea, same concept, climate change has ruined the planet and but in this instance it's dried up most of the water like the Mediterranean Sea is now a desert and water is very hard to come by and I found it very interesting but there's not a lot of backstory to explain it but I found it very interesting that this story takes place in Scandinavia but there's a lot of Japanese elements brought in and it was just very strange like how did Japan and, and Scandinavia come together. I don't know. I found it very interesting and intriguing that it was very Asian influenced, even though very Scandinavian. And um, this is about a girl who is a tea master. Her father is a tea master before her, and he trains her in, in the art of tea making. And part of that art is knowing where your source of water is and having that knowledge. And so she has water. 
that no one knows about? And what is the consequence to that in a world where the government needs to have order and o own all the water and dole it out rationed to different people? And so it's 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 a slow burn. This is not nearly as exciting and fast paced as say a book like Breathe, but it's so beautifully written and it was so different from the other dystopian books I've read before. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. This is definitely going to be in grade nine. It's just such a beautifully told, lyrical book. I found it interesting how it's about water and the prose just kind of flows in such a way that you almost, it feels like you're immersed in, in water. It, it's, it's hard to explain. I'm not explaining it well, but it's beautiful. So I gave this four and a half stars. Next up, I read Ashfall. Um, this is also a book I did, I read for grade nine. Um, this book is about what happens when Yellowstone National Park supervolcano erupts and the destruction it rains down on America. Um, the book I read earlier this year, Life as We Knew It, that book has a similar premise. Um, obviously, not exactly the same, but they do. There is a lot of volcanic eruption in that book, and it's the same idea of surviving such a horrendous disaster. And I thought this book did such a better job of, of doing that. Like, Life as We Knew It was good. It was more of a um, found footage type of experience reading it. This is a fully immersive, like, you're there. You're in the middle of it, and you're experiencing it kind of a book. Um, or as Life as We Knew It was sort of safe, almost. I think I, that's what my problem was with it. I liked it for what it was, but it did feel a little bit too safe in that the danger that you would expect to have come about because of a disaster like that never happened. Well, this book throws you in the midst of so many, so many horrible things happen to the main characters in this book. It, 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 I kept thinking the whole time, like, I feel like the, the author has, like, this is like a Walking Dead universe, kind of, whereas humanity falls apart, basically. Where in the other book, humanity never fell apart. People are still people, and they still tried to help each other. In this book, there's no one helping. You help yourself. <laughs> so I thought, you know, it was a very realistic portrayal. I, I was, like, on the fence with whether this was going to go in grade 9, because it is very violent, and there's some, some very disturbing elements. But the story is so good, and it does match well, I think, with the other book to kind of, like, compare and contrast. So I think it's going to go in grade 9, I think, unless I have, like, a moment of doubt and change it out for something else. But I think this is definitely going to go in grade 9. But, um, but yeah, it was really good. I'm, I'm kind of tempted to go by the, the... I think there's at least a sequel. I don't know if there's a sequel or if it's a trilogy. I'm not sure, but I know there's one more at least. So I'm kind of tempted to get that and find out what happens next because they do kind of leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger. So I definitely enjoyed this. Ashfall by Mike Mullen. I gave it four stars. Next up, I read a book on my Kindle. I'm not going to give you the cover, but I read The Name of the Wind on my Kindle this month. I don't know if you can see that. It will. I don't know why, but the cover won't come up. It's being a pain in my butt. But um, I read this this month and it, I don't know. I find, found it slightly disappointing. I really wanted to like this book so much more. I did. I wanted to love it. I'm just not. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is another case of an overhyped book and me getting my hopes up too high, but I was just sort of left wanting more. I, my problem, I think, with The Name of the Wind is that this is another book where the author kind of creates this hero who is too perfect. He does everything right. Everything just works for him. No matter what he does, it's just like he's there. He gets all the glory. He gets to get everything. He's supposed to be dirt poor, but he always comes into money. Like, just in the nick of time, he, he ends up with money. And, like, I don't know, he's brilliant at everything. And I just, I don't like characters like that. They sort of start to feel, like, too good to be true. And, um, I don't know, and the whole book was like that, and I was just, I don't know. And, um, I, I could not figure out the world. 
Usually when I read a fantasy, I need to have the world building to help me kind of immerse myself in that world. And I found that it just wasn't there. Like, it didn't feel like a fantasy world. Even though they kept trying to make it a fantasy world, it just it didn't feel like a fantasy world. I don't know if that makes sense. It just sort of felt like I was... Like, it could be our world. With just like, well, we're going to change some names and make up some weird places, but... I don't know, it just it didn't feel like a fantasy to me. It felt like it needed to have more elements to become that. I just, I did not love it. I didn't hate it. I mean, I read, I kept reading it, even though it took me forever, and I'm still, I still have like 15 pages left. I'm like, oh, but, um, but I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to give this like two and a half, maybe three stars, but I just, I feel like, it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be for the hype that it got. For people to say it was like their new favorite fantasy. It's better than Harry Potter and all of that. And no, it's not. And the whole book is just like his childhood through like the age of 16, I think. And more needed to happen. And the, the magic school element was supposedly cool, but I just didn't feel it. It just it didn't even feel like he was in a magic school. I don't know. It didn't feel like he was learning anything. I don't, I, I just, ugh, I don't know. I, I'm not explaining it well, but I just did not get that book at all. I feel kind of let down by it. What are you going to do? And finally, five of the Walking Dead graphic novels. I read volumes 17 through 21. So basically, I wanted to know what was going to happen next in the show. And I'd already read up to volume 16. So I went ahead and grabbed Something to Fear, volume 17, volume 18, What Comes After, volume 19, March to War, and volumes 20 and 21 are All Out War, parts 1, 1 and 2. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to talk a lot about them because spoilers for anyone who watches The Walking Dead, but I am interested to see how much of that goes into the next season. I found that I am I really enjoyed Negan as a character. I did not expect to like him as much as I did. I kind of thought, you know, like the governor was the villain and you know you're not supposed to like the villain. He's definitely bad. Whereas Negan was really intriguing, and I thought he was hilarious, and I really, I enjoyed every time he was in, on screen. Uh, yeah, every time he was, like, being the focus, where the story was on him, I really, really liked it. So I, I really am interested to see how the show goes, because, boy, is he foul. I don't know how they're going to play that out on the show. Like, they're going to have to tone down his language a lot. But I found his whole, like, everything about Negan and the Saviors to be really, really interesting. And I'm very excited to see, like, how they do that on the show. I think um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who is playing Negan on the show, is going to do awesome. Based on that one scene from, from this past season, I think it's going to be really great. So I'm very interested to see if they go through the whole war in season seven or if we only get like the beginnings of that and then the next season will be the I don't know how long they're gonna draw it out but I guess we'll see but um but yeah that is what I read in the month of April what did you read this month or this past month <laughs> thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video please remember to like share and subscribe and I will see you guys next time happy reading bye